ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hi there, this is Matt Petrowski for ISO FileMaker Magazine, also for Claris or Claris Studio, Claris Pro. This will work in all of the different versions, FileMaker and Claris. So you're interested in learning about Get Device. Let's take a look at this. What I have in front of me is a FileMaker database that is super simple. In fact, I'll quickly show you how that it how it's created. You simply just create a single FileMaker field called calculation. You can do this in an empty database, and then you create another. Uh, well, calculation is a text field you can see right there, and then you create a calculated field, which we can see right there is calculated with the result of evaluate whatever comes from that text field called calculation. Super simple, two fields. With that, we can type whatever is in this particular function. So if I type in get and device, and then I click out of that field, I'm going to get a result. Now, there's a better way to do this, and that's using the data viewer. If you haven't turned on advanced tools in FileMaker, you simply want to go to your preferences, which I'm going to access right now, and make sure that on the first tab, the general tab, we have clicked Use Advanced Tools. Now, this will require a restart, and if you're on Windows, you'll want to access that from the bottom of the Edit menu where you can access your preferences. With that, we can go up to the Tools menu, which is what we're interested in. We can show our data viewer. We can click on the little plus button, and then this is where we can actually use FileMaker's uh, calculation engine. We can type in Get and Device. And right there, we can see that we're getting the exact same result. So one we're doing within the FileMaker database within a field, and here we're doing it just within what's known as a watch variable here in the data viewer. Now, this tells us something, but how can we use this? Without using FileMaker's help, we really don't know. So we're always going to want to use FileMaker's help, which we can always access from the help menu, and we can open up the FileMaker Pro help. I always suggest downloading the help or using something like I prefer to use, which is Dash. But over here, we can actually access the help. Now in FileMaker 19 and higher, FileMaker always goes online with the help. They used to have a button down in the bottom which allowed you to download the help. That is no longer here, but we are looking for the references. We go to the reference, it's going to expand. We go to our functions, which we also could see on the front page. Remember this. I'm going to go back to that front page. Down at the bottom of the front page, we have functions reference and script step reference, the two places that are most important. But going to our function reference, here we can search either within the browser or use this search feature. This search feature is only going to work within the FileMaker help which is great, but we don't want to search all of FileMaker's help. We want to search right here in this list. Command or Control F will let me type device, and it will jump right to that particular function, which I can click on. It will load and tell me what the return is. So as we scroll down, this is the critical area that we're looking for. Returns, zero for an unknown device, one for a Mac, two for a computer running Windows, three for an iPad, three for an iPhone, five for Android, six for a computer for Linux. So knowing that, let's take these numbers and do something useful in FileMaker. In most cases, you're going to be doing this within a script. You're going to be determining where, when and where something happens. So opening up the scripting workspace, clicking on the plus, we'll create our first script in this particular database. And we will type in just the word device right here. And I'm going to add a step. That step is going to be if. And then here I would be able to type my code in directly or I can click on this right here which is going to give me access to FileMaker's calculation engine. I prefer to do that because it's a little bit easier to see my code here. So we know that get device is going to return a number one, two, three, four, five, etc. Well, let's go ahead and take that directly from the help. Why do I need to type anything out unless I can just simply copy all of this right here straight from the help, copy that, go over to my help, and then I can put it here as a reference while I'm working on my code. I'm going to hit a couple of returns. FileMaker has two different ways that you can comment code. I can comment a single line by preceding it with double slashes, 
or I can comment a block of code by putting a slash, then an asterisk, then whatever I don't want to be part of my calculation, then an asterisk and a closing slash. So this opens it and this closes and everything in between the calculation engine is going to ignore. So with this now, I can actually use this function to do something useful. Well, I'm going to need one additional function. It's going to be called the choose function. Now, as I put the choose function here, the choose function is going to return a zero based result. In other words, there is a test. And then as a result of the test, it's going to have at least one result. And that is going to be result zero. Then I'm going to have result one, result two. Now, if you've looked at FileMaker's uh, calculation or its functions, you know that anything within curly braces is going to be optional. In this case, I do want to use all of these things, but I'm just going to get rid of it for right now because it just turns out that the choose function helps me actually do different things. So in this case, I would be able to say, take my get device, cut that, put it right in the test, and Here's how the result actually works. The easiest way to do this is to simply put returns. So I would be able to simply say, choose, <clears throat> and then simply have my results. So this is going to be my zero based result. So let's type in the word unknown. In fact, I don't even need to type it. I'll just simply copy and paste it right there, unknown. Now I'm going to put my semicolon because my next result, result number one, is going to be, and I'm gonna put in a tab here, Mac right there and I'm going to put it in a tab right here. In fact, all I really needed to do was take the results from the help and simply put them in right here and I could comment out whatever I want. So watch this unknown and then I'll just select all of that and make that I'll go here. I'll make a comment and I'm just using some keyboard commands or some keyboard shortcuts in order to jump between these in order to select them and get rid of them. But you can see that that's what this is doing right here. I'm simply taking the exact documentation in order to do what I would want to do. Now this is all code that I would use with the get device within the context of the result of the calculation. So in this case, let's say this was something that I was showing on the user interface. And I would be saying get device and the user would say on an iPhone right here and I wanted to say something to the effect of you're using an iPhone. So I could put you're using an iPhone right there. I can put literally whatever I want. But of course, the advantage of a calculation is that this value could come from a field. Let's say, for example, I had a different field and I could put, we'll presume that the calculation is a field called um, first name. And I was saying Matt is using. So I'd be able to put Matt and then I would use FileMaker's concatenation operator. And then I could put is using. Remember your space right there. So if the value of this field was Matt is using an iPhone and that was something I put onto my layout, that's what I, what I would actually get as a result. So let's take a look at a different example of this using my if statement. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want that to go into my calculation. But right here in my script, I would be able to say if get device equals one, or in this case, going over to my documentation, I could say if the user is on an iPhone, then I'm going to have the script do this. Otherwise, if they're on an iPad, I'm going to do this. So let's take a look at that. The iPad is three, the iPhone is four. So if get device equals three, and I'm going to make a comment for myself, I'm going to use that double slash and I'm going to say iPad right here because this isn't very helpful to me. If get device equals three. Well, if I completely forget what that is without the comment, then it's not very helpful to me. So I'm going to say right there, if get device equals iPad, then do this. You're going to say, I'm going to leave a comment right here. Uh, do something for the iPad. Now, how do I handle the iPhone? Well, I would add, I could do this in two different ways. I could say else if, FileMaker has an else if function, and I really don't need to type this again. I'm simply going to select all of this, copy it, 
and then paste it and just simply change this to four and change my note to iPhone right there. So now I can use my comment here and do something for iPhone right there. Now, what's the alternative to this? Well, I could have also done this as a separate set of if conditions. This right here is what's called an embedded else if, and I could select both of those statements right there, hit the command or control D key and duplicate that. And I could go work for another device right here. Let's go over and check the documentation. And let's say for some reason, we're actually an, using Android. Well, it turns out the FileMaker doesn't have an Android client, but WebDirect does work on an Android. So if the user was in WebDirect, this is on a web browser, and they were on Android, we would be able to say if get device equals five and simply say Android. Now, my alternative to this setup or to this structure is to simply just do it slightly differently. I'm going to take these two steps, I'm going to duplicate them, and I'm going to put some spaces in between them. And the alternative to using an else if is to simply use multiple if conditions. It really doesn't matter in this particular case right here. I'm gonna beg, borrow, and steal, copy the code right here, simply select those two, duplicate that, I'll add a space in between, and then I'll select that right there, and I'll paste that. So in this scenario, and we'll select each of these, I can do that with the command key, duplicate all of them and move them all down and then simply just move this. And I unfortunately didn't change my comment here, but I'll do it for this one and move that right there for Android, that one for iPhone and that one for iPad. So whether you use this structure right here of multiple if statements or whether you use an embedded if just really depends on how you like to read your code, but they're both going to do essentially the same thing. But that is how we can use the get device function either within the context of a calculation using a choose function or within the context of a script and determining what direction you want to go based on the results of get device. I hope this has helped you out and you can find more information about FileMaker and learn more using my other videos here on YouTube. All right, see you later and much luck. Happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.